Let's find the answer to the 50th weekly math challenge. But before I start, I want to quickly recognize j Love for being the very first person to correctly answer this challenge with the answer of 1275. A huge shout out to j Love. So now let's read the question. Let f sub k of x be 1 plus x to the k power plus x to the 2k power plus x to the 3k power plus x to the 4k power. And if you've tried out a lot of problems on complex numbers before, you know immediately that this is going to probably have something to do with roots of unity. Root of unity. Because in root of unity problems, the expressions of the form 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth and so on is so common. So you may say, maybe we are going to have to look at root of unity. But, but let's read on for now. And let a sub k be the number of complex roots of f sub k that are in the second quadrant when plotted on the complex plane. As usual, ignore points on the wheel and imaginary axis. And we are going to have to keep this in mind to make sure we are not counting any points on the axis. And we want to find the sum from k equals 1 to 50 of a sub k. Okay, so how do we start? One thing you may realize is that 1 plus x to the k plus x to the 2k plus x to the 3k plus x to the 4k is x to the 5k minus 1 over x to the k minus 1. If you do not see the equality, one thing you can do is to use the sum of the geometric series. So if you use the sum of the geometric series, in this case, it's pretty obvious that the first term is 1, the common ratio is x to the k, and you have 5 terms. So if you plug it in into the sum formula for geometric series, you are going to see that you get this instantaneously. Or you may have memorized that x to the fifth minus 1 over x minus 1 is x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And if you have this memorized, really replacing x with x to the k power instantaneously gets us the factorization. And this is the way I recommend, but you can use a geometric series if you want to. Anyway, however you go about this, you should arrive at this expression. So that's f sub k of x. And you want this thing to be 0 because you are looking at complex roots. And when is this going to be 0? When is a fraction going to be 0? Well, that's pretty easy. That's when the top is 0. But we have to realize that 0 over 0 is undefined. So even though top is 0, we cannot have the bottom being 0. So x to the k minus 1 cannot be 0. So these two have to happen at the same time. The top is 0, but the bottom is not 0 at the same time. And we see that this condition is precisely equal to x to the 5k is 1 and x to the k is not equal to 1. And this is why I was saying that we are probably going to have a root of unity problem because 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth usually causes the rise of expressions similar to this, which really have an intimate connection with root of unity. And now you may say, aren't we practically done? Because x to the 5k is equal to 1 is going to have 5k solutions. So that's going to have 5k solutions. And x to the k is not equal to 1. Well, x to the k is equal to 1 is going to have k solutions. So you may say the solutions we're looking for is 5k minus k or 4k solutions that we really care about. And out of the 4k solutions, we only care about the ones in the second quadrant. So you may say by symmetry, we can divide this by 4. So this thing is going to be k. But are you sure there's no potential holes in our logic? How do you know that when dividing by 4, it's going to get you k? You may say because of symmetry of how the roots are distributed on the complex plane. And that sounds right, but just for the sake of it, let's check one thing. So let's try checking x to the 15 minus 1 over x cubed minus 1. So in this case, we have our k being equal to 3. So let's try looking at the solution set to this, or x to the 15 is 1 and x cubed is not equal to 1. And let's see what this looks like. 
So here we have a complex plane, and I'm going to plot the solutions of x to the 15th is 1 on the complex plane. And already we see one complication. We see that on the first quadrant, remember that we are not going to count the roots on the real or imaginary axis. On the first quadrant, we have 1, 2, 3 roots, but on the second quadrant, we see 1, 2, 3, 4. So how symmetric is this really? So now you may say maybe dividing 4k by 4 to get k, maybe there was something wrong. Maybe we made a mistake. But look at this. When we take away the root of x cubed is equal to 1, so when we take away this root, this root, and this root, then we have 1, 2, 3 roots on the first quadrant, and in the second quadrant we have 1, 2, and 3, because this one magically went away. So it looks like our reasoning may actually work. So what are we asserting when we are dividing by 4? Well, we are really trying to say that even though the root of x to the 5k is equal to 1 does not have the same number of roots on each quadrant, when we take away the roots of x to the k is 1, we magically now have the symmetry. We have 3 roots in the first quadrant, and when you take the roots of x to the k is equal to 1 away, we have 3 on the second quadrant as well. And this seems like an interesting statement. Does this have to work? And just for the fun of it, I want to bring your attention to one more thing. I'm going to change the question such that instead of f sub k of x being our function shown here, let's say f sub k of x is 1 plus x to the k. In this case, 1 plus x to the k can be written as x to the 2k minus 1 over x to the k minus 1. So the root of f sub k is now going to be x to the 2k is 1 and x to the k is not equal to 1. And I want you to consider a case when k is 7. So let's consider the case when x to the 14th is 1 and x to the 7th is not equal to 1. And you may say, why am I doing this? Well, I'm trying to show you that there is something special about 5k that doesn't really work when you have some other number like 2k. So now let's try plotting this on the complex plane. So in this case, I'm going to plot the solutions of x to the 14th is 1, take away the solutions of x to the k is not equal to 1. And there are two things I want you to see. So this root went away, this went away, this went away, this went away, this, this and this. First of all, that we have two roots in the first quadrant when you remove the root, but you only have one root in the second quadrant. And the second thing we should see is that when we took away the root of x to the 7 is 1, we still have one root left on the real axis, and obviously we cannot count this. And it seems like when we did 14 minus 7 is equal to 7, this 7 includes this root. This 7 includes this root on the real axis, which is not good. So you want the roots on the real and imaginary axis to go away. And when you take away the roots, you want each quadrant to have the same number of roots. And in this case, neither of those is true. So obviously our reasoning does not work for 2k, so if you want our reasoning to work, our reasoning of just dividing this by 4, we have to show that something is special about 5k, so let's try it. To begin with, let's realize that when we take away these k roots, we are not going to have 1, negative 1, i or negative i as one of the 4k roots. So what I'm saying is that we're not going to have any roots on the complex axis when you take away k roots, and you may say why. Well, let's take i as an example. If i was the solution to x to the 5 k is 1, that is, if i to the 5 k was, was 1, note that because i to the 5th power, because i to the 5th power is equal to i, because i to the 5th power is equal to i, our equation can be written as i to the k is 1. And this is now telling us that i is the solution of x to the k is 1. And we already see why this 5 is so special, because it allows i to the 5th to be the same. And you can use the same reasoning on 1, negative 1, and negative i. Negative i to the 5th is negative i, 1 to the 5th is 1, negative 1 to the 5th is negative 1. So if 1, negative 1, i, or negative i was the solution to x to the 5 case 1, it must also be the solution of x to the case 1 as well. So when you take away this k root, it's going to go away. So we have already shown that for k root, so when you take away this k, 
all of these routes are not going to be on the axis. So not on the axis. Now how do we see the number of routes in the second quadrant is actually k? Well, there's actually a very straightforward way of computing it. To begin with, realize that if you have x to the k is 1, the first angle you're going to get, the first angle of the first solution is going to be 2 pi over k because you're going to have k solutions on the unit circle and you're taking 1 k of the entire 2 pi. So you know this first angle is going to be 2 pi over k and you want to see how many angles are going to fit in between the pi over 2 and the angle pi. So you want to see how many of these angles, so how many of these angles, this entire thing, is going to fit in between pi over 2 and pi as you keep on rotating around. And the one thing you can do to count it is to see how many 2 pi over k goes into the entire pi. So one thing you can do is do pi over 2 pi over k and then take away the number of angles between 0 and pi over 2. So take away the number of angles within pi over 2. So pi over 2 over 2 pi over k. But we have to realize that 2 pi over k may not evenly fit into pi. So who knows, maybe you're going to have 1 angle, 2 angle, 3, 4, and then maybe 5 is going to go right down below. And you don't want to count this fifth one. So we really have to take the floor function. And we are taking the floor function. So if you have a fractional amount of the angle before pi or pi over 2, we are not counting that. And when we simplify this, the pi's go away. And we get k over 2 floor of k over 2 minus floor of k over 4. k pops back up. And here k pops back up and you multiply 2 and 2 to get k over 4. So these are the number of roots. So these are the number of roots of x to the k is equal to 1 from pi over 2 to pi. From pi over 2 to pi. And this is telling us that number of roots of x to the 5k is 1 from pi over 2 to pi, which is what we care about, is when you replace k with 5k, we're going to have a 5k over 2 minus 5k over 4. So this is the number of roots of x to the 5k is 1 from pi over 2 to pi, but of course you want to take away the number of roots in the second quadrant for x to the k. So in this case, we're going to take away this entire thing. So we're going to take away k over 2 minus k over 4. And it turns out we can make the floor function go away. So in this case, this entire thing is actually equal to 5k over 2 minus 5k over 4 minus k over 2 minus k over 4. So we don't really have to care about the floor function. And you may say why? And the reason is because 5 is congruent to 1 mod 4 and 5 is congruent to 1 mod 2. And you may say what does modular arithmetic have to do with this? Just to make this clear, let's take a look at floor of 5k over 2 minus floor of k over 2. So floor of 5k over 2 minus floor of k over 2. And for simplicity, let's pick k of 1. So in this case, this thing is going to be floor of 5 over 2 minus floor of 1 half. And realize that 5 over 2 is same thing as 2 plus 1 half. And because 2 is an integer, this thing is equal to 2 plus floor of 1 half minus floor of 1 half. So the floor of 1 half parts are going to cancel out. And this is why 5 is congruent to 1 mod 2 is important. Because 5 is congruent to 1 mod 2, we are going to have the same fractional values when you take the floor function. And the fractional values are always going to cancel because they have the same mod 2, which is at the bottom of the fraction. And using the same reasoning, we can show that that fractional values of floor of 5k over 4 and k over 4 are going to cancel out as well because 5 is congruent to 1 mod 4. So we know this entire thing can be written like this and it's easy to see that this is 5k over 2 minus k over 2 or 2k minus 5k over 4 plus k over 4 or minus k. So this entire thing actually evaluates to k. So the number of roots in the second quadrant is k. And from here, it's not too hard to show that every single quadrant has k roots. So our 5k was very special after all. 
and we know this a sub k number of roots in the second quadrant is simply k so we are summing up integers from 1 to 50 also known as 25 times 51 or 1275